Hey everybody, I want to spend some time today talking about four features in Power BI that you may not be aware of, but that can easily blow up your data model or your report pretty much before you get out of the development gate. And so I want to talk not only today about how to defeat these four horsemen, but how to do so in a way that dramatically speeds your report development. So let's, let's dive right in and talk about each of the four. So the first one I want to talk about is auto detect relationships. And what this does is this turns over the decision making on your data modeling from your judgment and expertise to an automated process within Power BI. And I think if we're going to do that, Microsoft should bring back Clippy from the 90s to at least give you fair warning and have you give your consent to let them do what they're about to do to your data model. And a friend of mine sent me this, this actual example today from some work she was doing on Enterprise DNA Data Challenge 15. And she put this total wins table into her data model and had forgotten to turn off the auto detect relationships. And what it did is it built three relationships to this table of the wrong type, in the wrong direction, and actually added two bi-directional relationships instead of unidirectional relationships that created huge ambiguity within her model and undermined the accuracy of her DAX. So if that doesn't give you pause to turn it off, I'm not sure what will. But there's also the examples where if you're putting a disconnected table in your model, for example, to harvest um, values for a slicer, but that you don't want it connected to your data model, if you have auto detect relationships on, it's going to automatically connect those and basically render useless the, the disconnected element of that table that you are trying to achieve. So definitely something you, you want to turn off immediately. And we'll talk soon about how to do that. The second thing I want to talk about is um, auto date time. And this is a feature that was intended, I think, to help beginners um, who were not aware of the intricacies of dedicated date tables. And so um, what it does is it creates a single date table on each of the, the dates in your data model on the one side of a one-to-many relationship. So it can create, in some cases, five or six different date tables all these small day tables throughout your model. And it also does so in a way that you deal with the dates in a kind of a strange hierarchy format. So it, it not only clutters the model, but it makes working with them quite difficult. And so what you want to do, we'll jump into Power BI here, is you want to, and what we're going to do today is we're going to create a template file and we're going to turn off all these features in the, in the template and then save that template with some other functionality so that we can open that up every time we, we create a new report and have it ignore those four horsemen. So let's, if we go here in options and settings, what you'll see is in global, there is no way to turn off that auto detect relationships. That the only way to turn it off is here in the data load under current file. So if you don't do a template, you've got to turn this off every single time. And if you don't remember, it's going to create some of those bad relationships. So you turn that off. You turn off auto date time. Um, and I was also talking uh, today with um, Christian Angle. Um, and he had a really good suggestion. Um, yeah, under data load to make sure the detect column types and headers for unstructured sources is turned off. That that's something in Power Query that particularly with CSV files um, can cause problems because it only judges based on the first couple of hundred rows. And so it makes, again, some bad decisions that are going to potentially cause you problems. So if you turn that off and don't let Power BI substitute its judgment for yours, you're going to be in better shape. Um, so the big thing is we turn off auto date time, we turn off um, auto detect relationships, and auto date time is also something in the report settings under global. You can turn that off globally, and we want to do that. So we, we say okay, 
And so we've defeated the first two, the first two horsemen right out of the gate. Um, the next one is auto summarization. And what we're going to do first is we're going to we're going to put a day table into our template. And the day table that I use, and I think all of us in Enterprise DNA use by default, is Melissa de Corte's incredible extended day table. And you can find this um, right on the forum. You just search for extended day table, and it'll give you the full the full code. And this is available to to members and non-members. Highly, highly recommend uh, using this. I keep a copy on my on my desktop at all times, so you can just take this, copy it. And then we can go into Power BI, and we can just go home. New source, blank query, and if we go into the advanced editor, we can paste that extended day table code. And at this point, we've got we've got a decision to make. Um, since we are using a template, we don't know what the fact table is going to look like. It's going to be different for every report. And so, what you could do is you could attempt to if your if your fact tables tend to be of you know fairly constant duration you could create a a dynamic uh, start and end date to your your day table here um, and Melissa has some excellent posts in the forum as well as a video that I'll link to in the comments section here on how to make the the start and or end date of your your day table dynamic um, but what I'm going to do is just give a kind of a shortcut here in the interest of time. And what I typically do in this situation is I just do use a year that I know is not correct, but that I know is if I forget to go in and change things is going to give me really strange results. And it's going to jog my memory that, oh, I need to go in and match my, my dates of my date table to my fact table. So I'm going to just put in... 1950 here, and then we always want to use a full year in our date table, so we'll put to the end of 1950, and let's say that our fiscal year starts July 1st, Oops. July 1st, and then we just hit invoke, and it builds that, that date table for us. And so what we'll do later is when we know what our um, what the the, du the duration shape of our fact table is we'll just go in here and let's say it's you know 1998 to 2021 we'll just change those dates right here and then click OK and it'll update the date table to match those those durations so um, for now though this is this is going to be good enough so we'll hit close and apply and I want to talk about marking date tables now. This is the one of the other horsemen we haven't dealt with yet. And what you need to do in your date table is you can do it either in the model view or in the table view. I typically do it in the table view. And what you do here is go down and say mark as date table. And then mark as date table. And it'll ask you for the field that you want to validate. And in the extended date table, that's just always going to be the date field and validate successfully. And what it's doing when you hit the validate, it's doing six things in sequence. It's confirming that that date field contains unique values, that it contains no null values, that it contains contiguous date values, and that if it's a date time field, which in this case it's not, it's a date field, but if it were a date time field, it would confirm that it has the same timestamp for each of the entries of that date. And then what it does in addition is it gets rid of the automatic date hierarchies that I talked about earlier. And it also allows certain functions that expect a contiguous validated date um, under time intelligence functions to work properly. So in some cases, those functions will not work properly without a properly marked date table and a validated date field. So 
by marking your date table, it does all those, those good things. And we do that in the template. Now, even when we change the, the duration of the, the start and end date, it's still gonna remain as a marked date table. So we're good there. So the last thing we wanna do is we wanna talk about the auto summarization. And if we go to our field view, what you'll see is these summation signs next to all of our numeric fields. And if you look here, what that is going to show you under column tools is that it's putting a, a summation of sum next to all of those. It's assuming it knows what we want to do with these. And this gets to the issue of implicit versus explicit measures. And again, you don't want to turn over this decision making to, to Power BI. That you want to create explicit measures and you want to turn these sum functions off. Now, in native Power BI, there's no, there's no way to turn all those off at the same time. So what you're left with is the really laborious task of going through each of the, the ones where it's added that summarization to and going to column tools and then clicking down on this and saying don't summarize. And when you do that, you'll see it, it takes the, the summation sign away. But this date table, if you look, has lots and lots of these auto summarizations. And so we wonder, is there an easier way to do it? And in fact, there is if you're using Tabular Editor 3. And I've talked a lot about the benefits of doing so. I want to show you right now how easy using Tabular Editor 3 makes this problem. So we just wait for, wait for it to load. And we're going to take advantage of the advanced scripting mode in TE3 to just turn all this off at once. Let me show you, let me show you how that's done. So if we go here to macros, I've got a macro that says um, turn off summarization for entire model. And we can click on that. And you can look over here and see that this is just a relatively short C-sharp script. And you can just take a screenshot of that, just enter that in and save it up here in the, in the scripting toolbar. And I've got a, a video on how to do this tabular editor scripting that I'll, I'll cite to in the comments section. But the cool thing about this is if we go back to the Tom Explorer and we just click on our data model here and we right click and say macros and then say turn off summarization for entire model and then we just let that go through and hit control S to save. And when we go back to Power BI, what we'll see is that all those summations are gone. That it's turned off the summarization for our entire date table with just a couple of clicks. And that's just an awesome feature in TE3. And um, Heather Rowe, one of our enterprise DNA experts, also mentioned that it doesn't rise to the level of one of the four horsemen, but one of the things she thinks is really important, and I, I agree, is to turn off your key fields, to hide your key fields um, on the fact table side of the relationship, at least. And in order to do that, again, you'd have to go through individually and hide each of those in native Power BI. But again, you can script that in TE3 and just with two clicks have that also done right within your, your template. So we're almost done here. And what I just wanted to show you is, in addition to now knocking out those four horsemen, what we can also do is make our lives easy from a development standpoint in terms of theming and backgrounds. And so what we can do is if we go to, go to view, and then we drop down here under themes and browse for themes. As part of this template file, what we can do is if you've got a corporate theme or a favorite theme that you use, here's the, the enterprise DNA theme that I use as the, the default in many of my reports that we can import that theme. If you've got a, a logo, um, let's just insert image here. And 
I've got the Enterprise DNA logo and we can move that to the corner size that up and then we can set a background color um, so if we click over here and on the paint roller page background color and this is going to be one of the colors in our in our themes and we set that as our page background turn off our transparency and now we've got we've got a, a page background as a default and so what we can do now is just take this and save this not as a PBIX file but save this as a PBIT template and what that's going to do is it's not going to store with any data but it's going to store with all the settings that we've that we've said let's just call this uh, test and we'll just save that to the desktop and now what we can do you can put a description in here and what we can do is close this out make sure we've saved our changes and now if we watch kind of the magic of this um, Close out of Power BI entirely. And what we've done here now is, is pretty great in the sense that all of these problems that we have as default in Power BI, if we go in now and just open up our, our test PBIT file, we'll let that load for a minute. And it's invoking the date function. And it's pulling up our theme and background. And now if we look in our options and settings, we've got the, the detect column types turned off. We've got um, in the report settings, um, in data load, we've got our auto time intelligence turned off. We've got in the data load here, we've got the auto detect relationships and the auto date time. So we've got all the horsemen defeated. We've got a nice starting place for our, our design. And we've got um, all the auto summarizations in the invoke date table turned off. So this is hopefully just gives you some good food for thought and how you'd want to set up a similar template and avoid some of those major pitfalls. So I hope you found that useful and look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, thanks for watching. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.